this is a follow-up to the video we shot last week in, in corn, um, but we're combining soybeans today, and I honestly believe a, a well-balanced combine is going to have the same amount of loss through the rotor as it does over the sieve. So what I do during the day then is click back and forth, and I'm, I'm looking to see how much loss that I've got. So right now I'm on the chaffer, and uh, we're in the green here. Uh, with the amount of loss that we're getting and then I'll click over here to the rotor and then you can see that we're still uh, uh, a little less rotor loss today uh, than what we were getting over the sieve so uh, but still not bad uh, they're both in the green area but uh, that's what we believe a well-balanced combine and the same amount of loss in the rotor area as it does over the sieve. Hi, my name is Marion Kelmer, and I'm a fourth generation farmer from Western Illinois, and also the owner and founder of Kelmer Cornheads. Uh, today's Marion Minute is on choosing the correct threshing combine, concave, and also the correct separating grate for harvesting soybeans. First off, I feel that a well-balanced machine uh, will have the same amount of loss through the rotor as it does over the sieve. Hopefully it's not very much and hopefully we can make this generic enough that it'll apply to red, green, yellow or gray combines. And so what I do during the day is I'm in the cab, I'm clicking back and forth between rotor loss and sieve or chaffer loss and I'm looking for the same amount of needle deflection and then I'm going to adjust concaves and threshing grates uh, accordingly to, to try to balance that out. Um, the other thing is that I want to rotate the veins in this particular combine has that ability and I want to rotate them into the advanced position uh, from corn because I had them retarded in corn to keep it from getting rotor loss, but I'm going to advance them in soybeans because the green straw and the amount of material and tonnage that's going through the machine, I want to get it out of the combine so I don't bleed horsepower and also um, I don't want to tear up the straw if I can avoid it. Um, try to get it out of the machine so that I don't let it drop and it ends up on the top sieve and then I've got an overloaded uh, chaffer. So get the veins in the advanced position. Um, also they sell, um, both John Deere and Casta do, um, different concaves. Um, we have a large wire or a small wire and you can read about it in the owner's manual. Uh, large wire is mainly for corn uh, or rice and the small wire is used for smaller crops like soybeans and uh, wheat and, and oats and, and so on. Um, but I still think in soybeans, as many of us that, that harvest uh, beans that, that are just getting ripe, um, we're struggling trying to get those green pods out of the green tank. And so what we use is a filler plate. And I think it's, it's pretty obvious here with this large wire concave, the opening is just too wide and the soybean pods here, as they come into the machine, they just fall directly on down and they go right into the auger bed and they end up uh, going back onto the top sieve and they drop through and then we have to try to rethresh them. And we'd like to try to thresh them on the first pass. So what we add is a, is a filler plate that goes underneath that large wire and um, it works really well for us because now with that filler plate it doesn't allow anything on uh, hole number one here um, right as soon as they enter the combine and you can see these pods are all going to stay here and then we're going to rub pods against pods and that's going to allow them to to thresh out is, is what we're looking for and then we can move on back into the into the machine so regardless of color on a machine I think you can really improve um, threshing power uh, by adding a filler plate underneath uh, that first concave. Now as we go past the firewall and we move back here into the separating area of the combine, um, we have some choices there that we can make as well. Um, this particular combine came from the factory with the 3 8 square separating grate 
and we have changed over to a slotted grate and, and we prefer that. And the reason is, number one, as the straw is coming back, you can see how open this is and we can start to get a lot of straw that's going to drop direct, directly onto the top sieve and, and I don't want that. I want it to pass on through. Over here with the slotted uh, grate, you can see the holes are smaller and so it's more likely to be able to pass this material on out the back of the machine. So that's the straw portion of, of this story. The other portion is the mog or material other than grain that, that is coming through the machine as it's being threshed, the, the crop is being threshed. And, and over here um, on this uh, 3 8 uh, square bar separating grate, you can see the material very easily uh, falls on down and, and ends up onto the top sieve. And again, I've, I'm overloading the chaffer, which is going to make it difficult. Um, I'm going to shake beans out the back. I'm going to have to increase fan speed to make it happen. But uh, with uh, the slotted concave, it just does a much better job of being able to hold that material so that it passes on through and goes out the back end of the machine. So those are some of the changes that we've made um, to this machine. Um, and we're, we're really uh, happy with, with its performance. But without taking the time to add the for good thresh, using the slotted concave to keep the material in the rotor area, um, I, would, I would struggle to harvest beans with this, this machine. Uh, so the, the settings that we're running, rotor speed, I run around 600. Um, rotor speed, I think, is very, very closely related to the cracks on beans, so I'll speed it up until I see the first crack and slow it down. Um, the concave clearance, uh, we're running about an inch, and again, I, the same thing I do in corn, just open up the concave until I start to see a little more deflection for rotor loss, and then I'll back it back down because I don't want to over thresh if I don't have to. As far as the bottom sieve is concerned on, on the combine, if I can do a really good job, um, I've got dead ripe beans and they're threshing, um, I can pull the bottom sieve wide open and, and I'm fine. But if I'm struggling and I got a lot of green pods and I'm just not getting them to rub out on the first pass, then we'll go ahead and close that bottom sieve down, send them on back for a, a second pass. And on the top sieve, of course, uh, we just want to make sure that it's open enough that we're dropping the pods on down through and I use the grain loss monitor uh, to adjust the uh, top sieve. So with that, um, if you want to see more videos uh, talking about setting combines for both corn and beans, um, visit our YouTube channel or come to our website, calmercornheads.com. And uh, if by chance uh, we can help you out on your corn head, uh, feel free to give us a call at our front office at 309-629-9000. And last but not least, uh, I keep my cell phone on um, this time of the year uh, from 5 in the morning till 9 o'clock at night. Um, that number is 309-368-1182 and I'm harvesting seven days a week just like everybody else so even if it's a Saturday or Sunday you're having trouble feel free to give me a holler take a picture send it to me send me a text message I'll be happy to do what I can uh, to help make your harvesting uh, more fun so with that um, I hope that you have a, a safe and profitable harvest this year and thank you very much for watching the video